So welcome to Cooking Fun with Joanna. I am Joanna Hodorowska. I am the owner of Nutrition in Motion, and I help athletes to fuel their body, their health, and their sport. I probably help them fuel their mind and, um, and spirit as well. But cooking is one way that we can actually take care of ourselves, and making real food is something that can help the body to function better, but also um, cooking can be creative and fun. So I do these classes every second and fourth Tuesday. And um, today we are gonna be making seared scallops with a green goddess slaw. So this is gonna be, I guess you kind of call it keto because it doesn't have any greens in it, but we're gonna have some yogurt. I couldn't find buttermilk in my grocery store. So I'm, by, uh, so I'm gonna use some um, plain kefir. Uh, snow peas, uh, parsley. I'm gonna add some spring onions and avocado carrots. I have a big head of cabbage. And that is, I think, and of course scallops. That's the thing that we, we need to have is scallops. So you'll need a blender, you'll need a frying pan. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the blender with our stuff. And hi, Steve. Hi. And I, I was very bad at preparing here because I didn't even get ready for the, uh, get my knife. But uh, we're gonna start with putting in the scallions, the avocado, so a quarter cup of the kefir or the buttermilk, a quarter cup of the, um, the yogurt and a whole avocado. So we're just gonna go ahead and start with the whole avocado. And you anything on there about an avocado? Pardon? I don't think you have anything in here about an avocado. Yeah, there's an avocado in here. Oh. Where do you see it on the list? Should have been on the list. Well, then you're going to make it without the avocado. Good, because I don't like avocado. If you don't like avocado, then, then you're just going to not use the avocado. So just, okay. you know, if you don't like avocado, my suggestion is just with the with the yogurt and a, and a little bit more of the yogurt. And so instead of a quarter cup, you're going to use a half a cup. And then I'm going to use the, the kefir because my grocery store did not have buttermilk. So... Instead of that, that cup of avocado, you're gonna put in a cup of the plain yogurt. Got it? Yep. So you're gonna put the avocado into the, into the blender. This is the not really that exciting part of it. You're gonna put um, a quarter cup of the, not that yogurt, but in your case, you're going to put a whole cup of yogurt into it. So, whoops, note to self, take out the paper so that you don't have that as part of your dressing. So it's going to be two big tablespoons in my case. So that'll be a quarter cup. And then you're also going to do a quarter, quarter cup of the butter. Hey, go away now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute you for a sec while he's he's screaming. And then if you have a question, you can always ask the question. But like I said, I'm gonna use a quarter a quarter cup or a half a cup of the buttermilk, and in my case, it's kefir. So that's a half a cup. There you go. Fun with cooking, you just make a mess, right? And then you're gonna take two spring onions and I just dropped one on the floor so we'll, we will not be using that one. You're gonna chop the bottoms off and peel off. And these are pretty fresh, although I see that I have, an, a, a, I don't know, a cruddy end is what I'm gonna call it. But you wanna peel off that outer, outer layer at the bottom and anything that has that really thin skin on it. And then just um, chop it into two inch sections. 
you're going to chop it into two in sections and put that into the blender. Uh, probably a little bit of salt in there. So I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of salt into the goddess dressing and one turn of pepper. Okay, but I made it too. And I think that's all you're going to put in here. Um, oh, and a little bit of lemon juice. I forgot the lemon juice. You're going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice into the. Yep. One tablespoon of lemon juice. If I can open it, I could use it. So, tablespoon. Put that in there. And now the fun part. You're going to put it on your blender and blend it. But I would suggest putting the lid on it first. Otherwise, you'll have the contents all over your kitchen. So you're going to put it on low, get it to stir a little bit, and then keep upping it until it's all blended. If you want it a little bit more chunky, you can. I'm not going to put it on the almighty all powerful setting. But that's going to be your dressing. So it should look nice and thick and creamy. And mine just released a little air bubble, but it should be pretty thick. So that is gonna be the dressing. So we're gonna put that aside and just leave it there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to chop up the, um, the cabbage. And I couldn't find in my grocery store, I couldn't find the Savoy cabbage. So I got a, what they called a Chinese cabbage, which it looks like a regular cabbage, but it looks like somebody sat on it, so it's flat. Gina cheated. She got a bag of coleslaw. And that's what I was just going to say, that you can cheat and just get a bag of coleslaw. But I am going to, I do have a bag of coleslaw that I could cheat with too, but I'm going to at least demonstrate that if you want to do your own shredding, this is how you do it. So you cut it in half. That's the easy part, right? But you need a big enough knife because you need some leverage. And this one's pretty fresh, so I don't have to peel any of the outer, outer layers of the, the cabbage off. But what you'll wanna do is cut it in half, put one aside, get rid of, actually, you don't have to get rid of anything, but you basically take that knife and just start shredding it. And if you want smaller pieces, you just cut down the, the middle. And this way you can just kind of keep turning it and then you get shredded cabbage. And you can get them to be smaller pieces. And I'm trying to cut them about a quarter inch thick. So as you can see, I'm, I'm cutting it and twisting the, the cabbage as I'm doing it. Now I've got too big of a plate, so I'm gonna take that and put it out into my bowl. If you're using the coleslaw in a, in a package, it typically has the carrots already um, in. So in this recipe, you're gonna be shredding the carrots. So I'm gonna do that because I've got three carrots that I'm going to shred. But a lot of times the coleslaw that you buy in the package has the carrots already in it. Oops, that's kind of a big piece. So it might even only need just this quarter head of cabbage. And if you have more cabbage to chop, and this way you cut all the way around that centerpiece and can toss that into the it's not the recycling bin, but it's my um, composting container. That's another thing that's a, a beauty of cooking is that you create a lot less waste. So I have, I have now basically a bowl full of cabbage and that's only using quarter of the cabbage. Now I'm gonna use my mandolin and shred the carrots, but I'm gonna check the end of that one. 
And I'm gonna use three carrots to shred in here. And then you're gonna also cut some radishes. And I ended up buying a daikon radish just because it's green. Um, and it also helps to detoxify the liver. So I decided to get the daikon radish, even though the regular radish also is helpful for detoxifying the liver and it also helps to lessen allergies. So when I've had seasonal allergies, I always add um, the daikon and regular radishes into my meals a couple of weeks before allergy season. And definitely I try to have it daily during allergy season. You know, but you didn't know that radishes were good for detoxifying the liver. And it helps to reduce those allergies. The, the fun part with the uh, with the mandolin is you, you don't want to go too too far and then end up slicing your shredding your finger. So I'm just gonna do this last one. And actually two is probably enough. All right, two is enough. So and then I'm gonna get that daycon radish and you'll be able to see what that daycon radish looks like. So I somehow forgot to take it out of the refrigerator. But this is what a daikon radish looks like. And this is one of the, the fatter ones in the, that I got at the Asian store. A lot of times it's, it's about an inch and a half thick and about a foot long. So with the daikon radish, it doesn't have the sharpness as a regular radish. So you're just gonna chop off the end. You're gonna, a chunk off and we're going to match stick the um, I probably should have done it in a slightly different way but this is the way I'm going to do it so you're just going to cut it into slices as you saw and then you're going to cut it across in, into quarter inch slices maybe even thinner than that and you can see that they're almost shredded but not quite. And you're gonna to toss that into your cabbage mixture. And that piece just doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna to toss that into my composting pile. And so you're gonna take all of that and put it into the bowl. Easy peasy, right? So now you're gonna actually stir the put some of the dressing into the in with the cabbage. And I don't know if I would put all of it in, but I'm gonna put in a half of it. And then I'm just gonna stir it all together. And this could actually help to soften some of the, the cabbage. So you're gonna take two spoons, and just try to combine it. Because it's a thick dressing, I think it's gonna be a little bit more grab from the bottom and stir to the top and just keep tossing it until it looks like it's combined. But because it's a little green, it's hard to see. Green on green is hard to notice, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, you put the dressing in the, uh, all right. I'm putting the dressing onto the cabbage. And, and then that basically then we're done with this part and then we're gonna go to the scallop. So this is actually gonna be a very short class because I don't think it takes that long to, to do the scallops. And then we're gonna also just heat up that pan. We might as well just do that now. Put the pan on medium heat to warm up but i'm still finding like chunks of of the the cabbage with the blobs of dressing that i put in so just keep stirring it it's gonna get there it's all gonna be mixed before you know it
And I already picked the class for next time. We're gonna do a uh, black eyed pea burgers with a zucchini, no, with a, um, with a roasted spiced eggplant. So that'll be something completely different than what we've been doing. It's gonna be a completely vegetarian meal. And it's gonna be darn good because I've, I've made those burgers before and they're so tasty. So there, now your, your salad should look like this and you're gonna put it aside because you don't need it right now. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put all your other stuff on the side too. The, we have parsley. I'm trying to, trying to remember if to put the parsley into the, well, we're gonna put, chop up some parsley. So you're gonna take a handful of parsley and that's gonna go as a garnish at the end. So you're gonna take that parsley Try to ball it up with your with your fingers and then shred it. And then it's gonna be about quarter inch thick. And try not to get your fingers under the knife blade because that could hurt. You're just going to kind of saw your parsley into pieces. And then when you're done with that, then you can take that knife and cut it some more on the other edge. And you can see there's always a piece that doesn't quite chop up. So this is a one way that you can get those other pieces to be chopped and sh totally minced. So that's gonna be the parsley that we're gonna add into the scallops when we're done. Oh, I forgot to add one more thing into it. We forgot the, the snow peas need to go into the salad too. I knew there was one more thing that was missing. Are they going to be chopped up or? They're going to be chopped up, yeah. All right. So I'm going to take a handful. So it's going to be about a half a cup. So what I would suggest is to move that parsley to the side. And you're just going to slice them into these, um, into quarter inch strips. And you can do it on a diagonal if that's easier. Actually, that does actually seem a little bit easier. And just try to keep them all together. And you're gonna put that into your salad as well. And there's one that decided to be a little bit on its side. So that way you'll have about a half a cup of the snow peas in the, in your salad. And the salad is a great anti-inflammatory salad because the cabbage is anti-inflammatory. The daikon radish is detoxifying. And I don't know what the general properties are of the, of the snow peas, but they're green. So they're gonna have some B vitamins and some other, some chlorophyll in there too. And of course, there's always one that just gets away. So I'm gonna to try to cut that there. Use the edge of the cutting board to peel it off that knife. And then you're just gonna mix that in too. It's about a half a cup of those snow peas. So that just adds a little bit more color into it. And if you had the radishes, then it would be more red, but I didn't put those in. And if we need to salt this later, we'll do that later. But we'll wait till we're actually done. So now we're gonna put, I'm gonna move you over here to my, um, to my pan. And you're gonna put a little bit of the ghee or olive oil into the pan. I like the ghee only because it gives a nice little buttery flavor. Now, if I could just open, if I could just open the container, then I'd be in <laughs> So what you're gonna do now is you're going to um, pat dry the so what you want to do is actually take a take. I have 
two paper towels together. You're going to lay out these large scallops because you want them to be dry. If you want to pan sear them, they need to be dried on both sides. So use a paper towel for that purpose because otherwise they, they release too many juices and then they don't actually brown. And that's what we want is to brown each side. More somehow they're supposed to fit on this paper towel. Well, they're not going to fit on the paper towel. Sometimes you just have to realize that it's just not going to fit. And, or you force it to. So now I've got it all on there, and then you're just going to fold it over, get rid of the container. And if you have one scallion, I'm actually gonna like chop up one scallion and put it in here as well. Now, as you can see, um, I'm using just one green onion. I'm gonna take the, the end off and I'm gonna cut it into, into two inch strips. And I'm gonna cut those bigger pieces a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna basically cut these into, mince it into quarter inch pieces. It's not quite as easy on the stove because the, the, the grate keeps wanting to move. But if you push down hard enough, it'll stay in place. I'm gonna put these into the pan and it should be heated up by now. One last one. Okay, so you're gonna mince that, mince those onions and put them into the heated oil. And now you're gonna put the, I just have to make sure that the, the ghee is across the whole pan. All right, so now you're gonna take these, um, the scallops, and turn the heat up just a teeny bit more. Just put it down instead of up. And you're just gonna lay the scallops on top of the pan. And you're going to move the, the onions a little bit out of the way as you put the scallops on. So I have one last one here. But I don't know if you can see it already. The scallops are already letting out more liquid, which is why you want it to be on hot. I'm just going to wash my hands real quick. Gina didn't get as big scallop as you did. We got the smaller scallops. So I'm going to put some sea salt onto the scallops. <clears throat> A little bit of pepper. And this is the challenge. The scallops let out a lot of water. So I'm going to do something unconventional. I don't even know if this will work, but I'm going to try it anyway. I want to get rid of that liquid. So I'm going to use a turkey baster and grab some of that liquid. What are the walnuts for? The walnuts are going to go into the salad. Oh, okay. These are letting out a lot of liquid. I don't know about yours. 
I'm just going to keep going and face out the, the liquid. And I can get pan seared scallop. I'm just going to tip the pan. I found is I got some of the scallions in there too. All right, one, more, one last time. All right, I think I got all that the extra liquid out of there. As much as I could anyway. You're going to keep it on that high heat and then we're going to flip them over. I'm actually going to turn up the heat a little bit more just so that they could, so that this liquid could evaporate. Because even though I've gotten so much out of it, there's still more. All right, so now we're going to flip the, the scallops. So they, sh they should be getting, no, nope, they're not right. They're not ready to flip yet. Because you want, you want it to be, it's kind of translucent when it's not cooked yet. And it's only halfway cooked. So maybe these little pieces are ready. So I'm going to flip those. But now the liquid is starting to evaporate, so I think we'll we might be able to get them caramelized on the other side. But I don't know if you can see, I've got it on pretty high heat, so I'm trying to get that liquid to just continue to evaporate because I don't know how much I can take out still. So. Let's try. The other thing I could do is take the paper towel and try to soak up the. Excess. Are we putting gar Are we putting garlic in this? No. Then what's the garlic for? Well, probably because I meant to put it in, but I never did. So we can always put in garlic. So we'll go ahead and put that in now, because then it'll. You can peel the the garlic, cut it in half. And mix it into and put it in. I think I have just put garlic into everything, so I just forget sometimes. So we're gonna just put that in, and now we're gonna flip the the scallops. Oh, that's it. Okay. 
I'm still amazed at how much liquid these things let out. Yeah. Even though you pat them dry and do everything you're supposed to do, they still just end up being really liquidy. But put it, put it on high heat and we're just gonna keep letting this reduce and it will be ready in a wee little bit. So right now we can go ahead and get our plates. And I want to go ahead and take a big scoop of the cabbage. And put it on my plate. I'm going to take a little bit of the parsley and put that on top. And this is starting to get there. So I finally have zero liquid in my in my pan. So let's see if these little buggers are. Yep, they're going to be caramelized on the on the one side now. So we're going to give it three more minutes, And then we're going to lay, lay a couple of these on top of the salad, or we could lay them along the, the edge. And yeah, we actually have the small scallops. You got she the grabs, small scallops? Yeah, she grabs small scallops. All right. But just leave them in place. Let's see if we can get these to, to brown, because that's the whole idea. Oh, I got one brown. Progress. I got two brown. I got three brown. I'm gonna flip them over so they be brown on the other side. There you go. I think I need to know the secret of. I think I just discovered the secret of how to get the uh, the sauce out of the, the the juice out of the pan. The turkey baster. There you go. It worked. But yeah, now now I'm getting them to actually brown. I think this is the first time I've managed to do that. So I'm almost, I'm I'm actually kind of proud of myself. <laughs> so there you go. How okay. are are yours browning it or no? A little bit. It just it takes a little bit, but all that liquid has to disappear first. Now I'm actually going to take mine since it's since it looks like it's ready. And I'm just gonna lay a few of these around the edge. And then we're gonna sprinkle some walnuts on top of the on top of the on top of the walnuts. All right. So this is what this is what mine looks like so far. And I'm going to move back to here so that you can see me. I put the parsley on there already. So now I need a fork. What else do I need? Oh, the walnuts. Where did I put the walnuts? And so we're going to take some of those walnuts and sprinkle that onto the salad too. Actually mix them in. Yeah, well, I haven't gotten there, so that's what I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna pour a quarter cup into into the into the salad, 
and that way it'll be there. And I'm going to take the rest of that parsley and also put that into the into the salad. So that way I can have it all ready for tomorrow and the next day, because this is a big bowl of salad for one person. And now, and now we get to fry. Do you have yours ready yet or no? Yep, there you go. All right, let's, let's put you on the video next to mine. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, we gotta add you as a pin. And then we're gonna take a picture of both of these things because it just looks so good. So now, now it's the bewitching hour, right? We get to find out how good it is. So I'm trying to debate whether I should try this. I'm gonna try the, the cabbage first, and then I'm gonna do the scallops rather than put them together. Mm. Very good. I think I still need a tad bit more salt. Now I'm gonna try the scallop. Mm. Those are good. And the interesting thing is that this, I should have tried the scallop first because the scallops are actually quite salty because they come from the ocean. So eating the scallop together with the salad is probably the better option. No. I'm not a yogurt person, but I actually like this dressing. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's actually one of my favorite dressings, but I've never known how to make it. So that's definitely gonna be one on my on my keep it on my list kind of dressings. And then um, that's a fad in two weeks, and not in two weeks. But on, um, what's the second Tuesday of June? Um, yes, there's mine. So June 14th, we're gonna be making the um, Black Eyed Pea Burgers with a roasted eggplant. June 14th. Um, yes, June 14th. So, we're going hello. To, hello, you know. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go vegan next time. And we're gonna do black eyed pea burgers and roasted spiced eggplant. Sound good? Yeah. That sounds good. Well, thank you for joining. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. And you know, every time you cook, you learn something new. So today you learned that you have to get all the liquid out of the scallops to get them to be brown. And the best yep. way to do it is with a turkey baster. So Lesson learned. For the first time ever, I have browned and caramelized the scallops as they are supposed to be. So if you enjoyed this class and would like to see more of them, please um, consider donating $10 for the class through the, through the links in the, in the bottom. And I want to know how yours turned out. So if you enjoyed it or if you have any tips and tricks that you learned, just share them and you can contact me as well at joanna um, at www.nutritioninmotion.net.